I get those goosebumps every time. I just have to get the big fellow off the bench. Oh Could this be their last chance now? In it comes. Bugs to the ground. It's gone. Bally Bugs has I'm waiting on ya. It's oh, waiting on ya. Yeah. I get those goosebumps every time. I need the hind to throw that to the side. Yo. I get those goosebumps every time. Yeah, when you're not around, we throw that to the side. Yo. I get those goosebumps every time, yeah, 713 Through the 21, yeah, I'm riding Why they on me? Why they on me? I'm riding I'm sitting low key I'm sitting low key and hiding I ride up I get those goosebumps every time Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the Loaded Mag and UFC. We are back again for a, yeah, it feels weird having the Loaded Transfer Show sign above us so early on. Uh, it sure does. For a nice winter, winter warm up. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to look into some transfers with the. Uh, with, with the main man Graham, who's waiting in the in the green room. But Daz, how are you? How's things? All good, Pete. All good. He's not used to this switching from one to the other floor to the other, and really quickly. Uh, but yeah, all all good. Um, yeah, it's, and obviously Halloween as well, so our our spooktacular tonight. But um, yeah, fully loaded transfer show. Yeah, we did we didn't realize we we're going to bring you back this early, but we just switched it up today, and uh, uh, it was great that Graham was available to come come chat to us. So looking forward to that. Definitely. Definitely, and look, uh, there's like you, you might not think it, but there's a few, fair bit to talk about, um, yeah. and, we'll, and we'll get it nailed down. I actually was on both streams at the same time, <laughs> that's why I was able to switch so quickly, <laughs> getting everything ready. Uh, but no, great to have everyone in the chat. Uh, Lisa, thanks for joining us on the um, on the um, uh, the Devil's Advocate podcast, uh, with, with the Man United fans. Um, and a few others as well. Great to see so many familiar faces in the chat. Get your questions in for Graham, okay? And let's get him in now. Why not? We have 90 Min's very own Graham Bailey. Uh, so it's a pleasure to welcome him in. Welcome back, Graham. How you doing, Graham? Good evening, guys. How are you doing? Very All good. good. You have the Very scream good. mask in the background as well. Yeah, I thought I'd like a little, <laughs> little, little, little Halloween. I, I did it on early nice tonight. Yeah, I was out uh, out early this evening collecting some goodies, and uh, so yeah, did me um, did me good, and I thought I'd uh, um, come back. Happy to join you guys on the show. I was like, no, what's going on at the uh, at the real St James Park? Unfortunately, as Middlesbrough is losing to lowly Exeter, um, <laughs> so it's a good start to the evening. Um, yeah, so it's a real, real horror show for me tonight. Uh, <laughs> double whammy, uh, but no, great to have you back. Always a pleasure, um, to have you uh, in with us. And uh, look, you know, let's start with um, something maybe not transfer related, but something that you wrote, uh, I think it was a good couple of weeks ago now. Um, and we knew it as Newcastle fans knew it. Uh, but lots of opposition fans wanted to talk about it. Um, and you put a piece out just confirming um, that, you know, uh, he, although he's viewed as a serious contender for the England job, and lots of opposition fans got excited about that, um, that Eddie Howe isn't really going to be um, someone that's going to take the job. Um, but just talk to us a little bit about your piece and what you wrote. Yeah, obviously, the, those who read it, obviously, a lot of people jumped on headlines, etc. Um, obviously, England are doing their due diligence, as we speak, on who the new England manager will be, because Gareth Southgate isn't staying in the role. He'll be walking away come the Euros. And and obviously, they do like Eddie Howe and he, from the outside. Not from the outside, but he would be an outstanding fit for that role. You know, there's man management, Jason Tindall with him. You know, he he, would t- he ticks an awful lot of boxes, do, mm-hmm. doing well, successfully um, at Premier League level. Uh, he's not the only one to like it. You know, obviously, the, the like the Pep Guardiola's of this world, but someone like Steve Cooper, who's worked with in the FA before, he's very high up on the list. Graham Potter, to a lesser extent, I'm told. But, and you know, guys, this... 
this is just something that we know he's on England's list. It's not a huge surprise. He would be one of the bigger candidates. And and although as it stands now in, in November 23, yes, he, he wouldn't take a job and he wouldn't be available. But the only thing I'd say is let's see what the, the landscape is next summer at both Newcastle and England. Both could be very different. You know, everyone, every sun is shining on St. James at the minute. If if you are not in the Champions League next season, let's let, let's see what the attitude of Piff is like at that point. Um, because because as we said on the show now, before guys, it's Eddie Eddie Howe is doing wonderful work, but the pressure is on. Mm. Piff, Piff are not here as much as you, uh, many of you Geordies and Newcastle fans believe. Piff are not here just to make you happy. They're here to win. And if and and it's a results business now, football. That's where it is. And and yeah, let's hope Freddie Howe's sake, he's the man to do it. And currently he is. Well, let all, all I would say is let's see what the live land is um next summer. It may be very different on, on all horizons. It may not. Yeah, you may be coming off the season having finished second or even won the Premier League title, guys. You don't we don't we don't know what uh a lot of things can change in football, can't they? So um yeah, it's just one of the, it, it was just as you say, Pete, it was just the FA are doing their due diligence, looking at it. it it's no surprise that Eddie Howe is a, is towards the top of their list for potential successes. They wouldn't be doing their job if he wasn't towards the top of their list, I don't think. Yeah, no, it's it's understandable. But um, uh, interesting what, what you said when you talked about the landscapes um, of, of the end of the season. That's surely not Eddie Howe's here for at least another couple of years, surely. Oh. We, we we know he he's been. I'm, I'm just I'm just worried that Graham has has it's targeted it's, 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 Eddie it's, it's, Howe with, as the new no, ASM a, or something. No, it's <laughs> guy. It's a results business. I, guy, guy, I'm telling you, I'm telling you now. If you don't finish top six, it wouldn't surprise me if there's a new man in charge. That's what I'm saying. If you if you don't finish top six mm-hmm. on and or win a trophy, then why wouldn't Piff look look to possible make a change? And and I know that we had Amanda Stavely's and maybe Jimmy Rubens and etc. But there's there's only one people making decisions at St James. That's not Peter on the bush. Piff are making all the calls here, and and then they're, they're not in this to finish sixth in the Premier League. They, I'm not saying they will. Newcastle have got a great chance of finishing top four again. If they do, he's, he'll be fine. But as we saw at Man City etc., it's a results business now. It really is. And we, as much as we like Eddie Howe and we all love him, he's he's been great since arriving. You know, it there's no there's no room for sentiment in football. We know that, guys. We've seen it a lot um, in the northeast more than anywhere. But it's just it's just one to keep an eye. But let's see as it stands now. Eddie Howe's not going anywhere, and he won't be. Yeah. But yeah, and, and, that, and that's something I think. Remember, guys, as well. I think I think some, that's something that Eddie Eddie will be aware of. You know, he, in these sort of positions at these top four teams, unless you are a Pep or Guardiola. Pep Guardiola or Jurgen Klopp, the longevity isn't there anyway. So does he? And and what, the only thing I would say as well, next summer that England job would be quite appealing to somebody because you're only two years out from a World Cup. And I tell you what, as well with this England squad, guys, this is the greatest England squad of my lifetime. You in Phil Ford and and Chief Pellingham, you got two of the not young players, two of the best players in the world. At your fingertips, this England squad is sensational, and if they don't win the Euros, well, yeah, it's it just a few things to consider. Yeah, no, I, I think I think though that, that, that I know what you're saying, uh, Graham. Anthony can change in football; look, <laughs> it changes from day to day. But I think even if Eddie Howe had had a bad season, I think he's he's still he's done enough to be given another season. And then, yeah, all bets are off. I think I think again, if we didn't if we work, didn't work out again, he he he'd definitely be gone. But I think he's he's got a bit of breathing road. I disagree, but hey, I don't. I, well, what to say does? Well, I I don't agree. Per, I don't agree personally. I think that uh, I think there would. Um, I think I think Newcastle are in a different different stratosphere to that now. I think you're in a different. Um, um, Newcastle are in a different level now where if you don't produce the goods, you'll be gone. And that's for the players as well. Play, players and manager alike. And it's just, you know, when you're competing at this top, top level, that's just how it is in football, isn't it? Yeah. There, there is definitely added pressure, um, that's for sure. But look, I think most of us and people in the chat will probably agree that uh, 
Eddie Howe's more than capable of handling, handling that pressure uh, and taking us forward. And like you said, uh, Graham, you said there's, there's a high chance that we could still finish in the top four. In the, oh, in, yeah, by in, in, you're, you're well in the mix. And I don't think you'll be, I don't think you'll be challenging for the title, but I think you've got every chance of finishing top four again. Yeah, I agree. Um, definitely. Top, well, top, anyway, top five as yeah. it is now, guys. Top five as it yeah. is now. Top True. five is the M. Not top five, four, top five. five is the M. Aim top four if we finish fifth, that's okay too. Uh, yeah, but we'll, but we'll end it. We'll end it on that one. Um, let's let's talk about um, the some of the transfer noises then, because of course, look, uh, the, the obvious um, the obvious situation is that we are sort of we are without um, Sandro Tonali. Sandro Tonali has his ten month ban. Um, that has been confirmed, um, and obviously, Graham, you wrote um, pieces on that, and you've kept people uh, in the loop with regards to that as as the stories broke. But we know we don't have him until August twenty. I think it's August twenty fourth, twenty twenty four, and that is in place. Um, and so, we now need to manage until January without him, because in January, I'm convinced that we will sign players to bolster this squad. Um, and look, I'll, I'll throw it out there um, as a kind of early point. Um, Sky touched on it today. Not only are we out, out without Sandro Tonali, we have a difficult situation with long-term injuries. Harvey Barnes is out until end of December. Uh, Sven Botman, it's been confirmed today um, that you know they don't know the, the diagnosis of his knee problem. And um, they haven't got a time frame on how long he's going to be out for, which is not ideal because we heard last week he was back on the grass. Now we don't know. So something's happened in that point and he's our top centre back and we're now going to be missing with him for X amount of time. Alexander Isaac's not back until the uh, uh, until the international break. So that's the back end of November. Jacob Murphy, we don't know because he's not confirmed. Um, uh, not to my knowledge anyway, whether his scan has revealed that he needs surgery or not. If he doesn't need surgery, he might be back a little bit sooner. Eight weeks for Ellie Anderson. Obviously, we know about Sandro Tonali and Mankilio, who's not really involved too much on match days, has a groin injury too. There is a problem there long term that we need to make sure that we're not in that position um, uh, to be kind of as thin as we are right now. Um, but interestingly, you um, you put a piece out, uh, Graham, with regards to you know the fact that we've lost Sandro Tonali, um, and you know we might look into the loan market potentially for our replacement um, for for Sandro Tonali. And you've touched on um, the FFP considerations, and uh, you know I just want you to elaborate on that really, just just from within your piece. You know uh, how will it? How will we be looking? in your opinion, FFP related um, and, you know, from the loan market, you know, who who do you think could be a potential option um, for Newcastle United? Yeah, in terms of FFP, let, let's look at that first, guys. It's, as, as we know, it was a real consideration. Um, it's why Lewis Hall's on the, at the club on loan at the moment. And, and, <sighs> Newcastle have been under a microscope from the FA. I, I think incorrectly. They are being looked at a lot closer, you could argue, than other clubs. But it, it, that's just the state of play uh, as it is at the moment. Newcastle are making sure they are within FFP. As it stands now, it's my understanding, I'm told, that they are around £40 million in deficit in terms of FFP. Obviously not in terms of your bank account. Hey, <laughs> yeah, in terms of it, you're never going to be in deficit again. In terms of FFP, you're around £40 million, 40 million away from that. So, I, I from and, it, and if that is true, with them sources to be believed, and, and they were correct towards the end of August when they did say that, there's a re, not a real worry here, but there's a, a consternation within Newcastle now where they, they had plans. You know, a centre half was in it was a was a possibility, a third striker, a possible number ten, which is something I said to you guys. I still I, I still think you're lacking it now. I always said you're lacking that number ten. I stand by that. I still think you are. But now you're suddenly signing another DM, which wasn't in the plans at all, and, and and nobody could foresee it coming. It's it's a real unfortunate scenario. But now it is the priority. Really, you need someone else in there. So I think in terms of a loan signing, 
you know, you you've got to look at the low market here because there is that FFP Newcastle, they might spend some money, but it's not going to be a lot in January, guys. They really haven't got that facility. I think they've been I think they've been very careful about what to do. So and unfortunately for them, the in terms of bringing in a loan player. There are options out there for him. Calvin Phillips, as we know, guys, we talked about him a lot in the summer. Um, we talked about him before he went to Man City, didn't we? He's an ideal signing in many ways for Newcastle in terms of his attitude, in terms of what Eddie Howe likes as a player. He he owns a house in Weatherby. He could he could arguably commute every day in theory, guys. You know what I mean? So I think he ticks an awful lot of boxes, Calvin Phillips. He's a good professional. I think he would allow, in many ways, Bruno to see the Bruno of last year, maybe, with Calvin Phillips being more of a holder. I think he'd offer them different options. And and so I think I think Calvin Phillips might very well be the first choice. However, as we discussed on our previous show as well, this Piff relationship with Newcastle, and it came, it, it came around with um, Neymar, didn't it? And I said to you guys yeah. at the time, and we did discuss it, didn't we? I think that's, we did, that's yeah. smoking there. We discussed about the options going forward in January, and I was deadly serious. And I know, I know, I know a lot of people poo pooed it at the time, but this is a real, a real thing. And and there's nothing stopping Newcastle doing this. This it's a relationship they've got with Piff, and and I think you might even see other clubs try to do it as well. Obviously, Newcastle have the advantage that they're literally their owners also own a number of players. They already paid the wages of a number of players in Saudi Arabia. Now, Ruben Neves is the obvious one. He is an outstanding player. He's one who was on Newcastle's list. I love him as a player. I think he was he was the one of a few players who I didn't want to go to Saudi because I thought it was a huge loss. So I think he will be in the thinking. Gabri Vega, another player we talked about on the show previously. Yeah. I wouldn't and it, guys, it wouldn't surprise me if you saw two or three of them come in. Remember, there is no limitation on foreign loans. Newcastle could bring six or eight in if they wanted to, in yeah, theory. Exactly. But you can imagine how that would go down in the period. I think there is that belief <laughs> great. in St. James that, you know, I think whilst using this, even bringing one player in would anger a lot of people in the Premier League, I don't think they would take the mick. But I think it's a real consideration now. And and, you know, the, and, and think about the players available in a type of player you want. Yeah, Neves, Vega. But you've got Marcelo Brozovic. Milankovic Savage and Golo Kante in theory. There's an awful lot of players who tick the box for Newcastle here who could you could come in and you would not make you weaker in, in, in some regards. It might make you stronger if you if you think Ruben Nevers is a better player. Some people will, some people won't, but he's, you're not going to lose anything from that. So, well, you know... You, I, I was going to say, Graham, you, you wrote a piece um, and it came out on Team Talk. Um, is it, uh, you know, PF... PIF are willing to give Newcastle the green light on deals mm. um, between them and the Saudi Pro League in January. Um, and Ruben never seems to be that target. You've mentioned a few other names that are exciting names too, but Ruben never seems to be the one, certainly in the last four or five days, that seems to be talked about a lot. And even the Portuguese media are saying, and it's coming back from them as well as, as you guys over here, that he's really interested in that move. Um, now, yeah, the what the thing that I wanted to ask you is, you know, what is the chance of him being that guy? But secondly, what is the difference between PIF agreeing a deal with Ruben Neves to come to Newcastle on loan in comparison to Udinese's owner getting a player to go on loan to Watford? Like a, a lot of people forget that they've been doing that for years, and 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 that's been agreed, and everything's been okay with regards to that. We were going to be we were going to be kind of it, out of pocket on the back of that. Because I don't know if people in the chat might remember, and Daz, uh, yourself, Greg, might remember, and Matty Longstaff nearly went on a free to Udinese, who was then going to be loaned back yeah. to Watford as part of that deal so they didn't have to pay um, the sort of compensation on him. So, well, I yeah. would say, Pete, I think the if, to compare it to if previous deals, I think the closest comparison you've got would be David Beckham Coming from LA back to play play for yeah. Paris Saint Germain, that I think that's the comparison you're making. Rather than because because again that wasn't under UEFA um, regulations and this wouldn't be. This is FIFA. There's nothing to stop. I say there's nothing to stop even from UEFA country um, Newcastle bringing in 
numerous players on loan. And these foreign loans, you can have as many as you want. I think Hull the other year had seven or eight when they stayed up. It's it's a facility there that Newcastle is open to Newcastle. You know, this is um, yeah. In theory, they'll have to pay some wages, but they might not have to pay hardly any. It's you know, it's a, a Piff want Newcastle to be challenging, and it's it's such a unique situation we've never come across before. You know, when PSG signed Beckham, that's to cover his wages, etc. Newcastle take Nevers, the his wages are already covered by your owners. So, <laughs> you know what I mean, I, I, if I was Newcastle, if I if I was where you are now in the league, I'd I'd go and get two or three. I would. I'd go and get Vega. I'd go and get Neves. And I'd look what what centre halves are out there. Um, I, th- I think there's a lot a lot of potential in Newcastle, and you know, if you were challenging for that top three or whatever, I think it's an avenue they're looking at. And it's it, and I think the fact you haven't seen anyone from the club, even even the man Stabley, I'd be fed fed sources. No one's coming out and denying this at the moment, guys. So it's 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 clearly an avenue they're looking at. And you would expect them to. It's not to say it's going to happen, and not to say it won't, but it's clearly an avenue open to Newcastle they're looking at. And yet, if Callum Phillips doesn't happen, where are you going to go to next? I, I think it's one that Newcastle should look at, and they are. Well, uh, we, we, uh, sorry, go ahead, Dad. Go ahead, Dad. Yeah, no, um, Amanda Savory said, had said previously that they, they were looking at feeder clubs, but they were going to look at it differently. So maybe this is the difference. Maybe they have taken the Saudi League as our feeder club. Feeder but league. When they said that, who, 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 knew, who knew? Who knew Newcastle would be the feed, the club being fed? Exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I have to say this, and I'm sorry if I lose the chat, guys. But uh, you know, one player we're not talked about potentially coming back. What, what about Maxi? How about that? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing about that game? I mean, yeah, no. here he is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pete, Pete. To what? To what end? To what end? Um, yeah, they, they cover his wages. Yeah. He, he comes in. Yeah, but to to, to play where? Well, do, do you need you need someone you need someone overweight to sit on the bench there? But Pete, Pete, I'm sure you could do a fine job of doing that, and I could as well. Be, and we both do just as well yeah. as Sam Maximum. So yeah, on. we're not. Come we on, what 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 was Sam Max? What was what was Sam Sam Maximum offer? You got come on, and they got he's if he was still and I think it's a sensible move that he went because if he was still at the club, he'd be even further away from the first team than he ever was before. You know, Anthony Gordon's doing great. I don't think a wide player. I think if if you do look for a forward, it would be someone to play centrally. You know, we've got the problem with Isaac. Callum Wilson, unfortunately, you know, it just, you're, all, you're always wincing to make sure he gets through in the 90 minutes, aren't you? It's it's one of those aspects where it's a reason you kept Chris Wood for most of last season, wasn't it? it it's it's an interesting one, but I think they were looking at that before this Tonali situation arose, you know? Oh, man, Benzema. Benzema. <laughs> Scott yeah. I, I th- I, yeah, I think we have to uh, be sensible, but then you can, you can <laughs> see who's available over there, but I think there, there are options out there. I think as I said, I thought the number ten was an avenue. You look at them, and the and the centre half situation. You know who who have thought Jamal Jamal Lasalle would still be playing such a crucial role at this point. Yeah, and doing well. Um, well he well, he has well, done well. He, he was doing well, but yeah, it's a it's a situation. It's a headache that Newcastle didn't need to Nali. You know they they already had various targets in mind before Tonali went. They'll get this one sorted. Um, and we'll, we'll see how it transpires, you know. And in terms of the loans, if if it was Calvin Phillips as well, guys, what you got to remember, you've already got Lewis Hall on, on loan. You can only sign one more loan player um, in the Premier League, I believe. It's only one more within the Premier League. So Calvin Phillips, because if he did come in, it probably would be a loan with a view, a similar deal to Hall, where you would pay Man City in the summer. And that is that is doable. So in terms of the loan market and stuff, it does, it does force you abroad and... Yeah, and and you could argue the one place you're not going to get Piff aren't going to get ripped off is Saudi Arabia. It's the only place in the world football where you're not going to get ripped off. So they could argue we're being forced to go to Saudi because when we come, when we come calling in Europe, I know it's, a, it's something Daz has said on previous episodes when we've been on. You can't, there is Newcastle tax to be paid, and and that's just the way it is. So the one, the one place you're not going to play Newcastle tax is Saudi Arabia. 
Definitely. I just want to keep on with the midfield because we we will talk about some strikers and and centre backs as we're as we're kind of moving along because they just seem to be the positions as you've talked about Graham that 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 if we are going to strengthen they're kind of the areas that we're we're going to be looking at. But but Daz, I think it's wondering... almost. I think I think I think I think the only areas you probably want is the full backs and wide players and the goalkeeper. Mm-hmm. Everything down the middle, I think, is 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 is, is an area that Dan Ashworth will be looking at. Yeah, I, I I agree. Um, Daz Ruben Neves would would he be the guy for you? He's the one that everyone's talking about at the moment. Would he be the guy for you that you would get in on loan? We, we saw firsthand what he was doing as captain of Wolves, or as some of the players that Graham's mentioned, are they kind of intriguing you a little bit more as a as an option? But but Ruben Neves first, mate. What are you thinking? Ruben Neves, yes, bring him in. Look, we 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 look at him for buy him out, right? Uh, there about six months ago we we're talking about that for ourselves but bringing him in on loan and then having Tonali s- slot back in uh come into august september well, why not uh it, it's a, it's a no-brainer if, if it if it was possible to for that to happen but how is he getting on in in, in saudi i imagine he's he's uh tearing it up out there I, I haven't, yeah, I haven't, I haven't looked at him. I know, I know, Mitro's blasting away and, and looking like a what superstar that he is. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't think uh, Ruben is um, breaking too much sweat out there. I don't, he's struggling too much because he's such a, he's such a top class. But the thing about Nevers is he, he's in his prime, isn't he? What twenty six? Yeah, I think he is. he's in his prime. Well, he's not a bad age. He's a fantastic player. So hey, hey come on, twenty five years old is it's a great age. It's a great age. Come on, uh, but no, it's um for me, I, I would take him. It was last January, in fact, guys, when the links really started to kick in with Ruben Neves, and we did a we 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 did a couple of shows in January about him, and it was looking at sort of forty five, fifty million potentially to get him, which is eventually what he left for anyway. Um, yeah. I'd take him. He's a number six, first and foremost. He can play that role. But as you, as we we've, we've seen against us at Molyneux last season, he can score from the edge of the box. He can score from distance. He's good at set pieces. He can give you the kind of whole package. And I genuinely believe if we were to get someone like Ruben Neves in, I think six months with Newcastle United with Eddie Howe, I don't think he'll want to leave. I genuinely yeah. believe. I genuinely believe there could be an avenue to get him more permanently. Now, would that mean that another midfielder would have to go or be sacrificed in order to move him in because we've got Tanali coming back? Who knows? But I, I think he would be um, a really good option. Calvin Phillips as well, although he hasn't played a lot of football, it might take him a little bit longer to get back up to speed. Um, but Calvin Phillips as well, I think, would be um, a really good option. But the key to that is, is that if... PIF are kind of saying, yeah, we are happy to do those loans and uh, move some of those players to Newcastle. Uh, Graham, I just wanted to get your thoughts on that before we move on. Like, what, what do you what do you think the reaction would be if we were to sanction one of those deals and get it in? And I, I don't mean from Newcastle fans, because I think we'd love it. But what do you think the reaction would be, you know, in the media, um, from opposition fans? What, what kind of do you think that that, that would happen? Well, I think I think there's a massive, um, there's a huge snobbery within huge swathes of, of the British media with Newcastle, with Saudi Arabia. You can tell, you can tell they've been so ultra critical about the about the crowds we're seeing, etc. And and I was on a, I think it was on a, a radio show last week, and they were talking to me about the the low attendances in Saudi. I said, all right, well, well, you, well why don't you talk to me about the low attendances in the WSL? Because oh, that's not fashionable to talk about that, is it? You can't talk to me about the, the the thousand people attending the WSL, which is the big 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 league to watch over here in England. Okay, well, it's just pure football snobbery, Pete. It really is, and, and you guys should be used to that by now. You used it in Newcastle, but the Saudi, you know, there'll, there'll be there'll be some there'll be the Henry Winters of this world, etc. Will be will be writing lyrical from their ivory towers about how bad it is for football. It's not, and I'm, I come from it from Saudi Arabia has every right to be the biggest league in the world. Why does it have to be England? Yeah, it's great that it is England and we and we and we think it is. But that's just European snobbery. We we do not have a divine right to own football. We don't have a divine right to be the biggest league in the world. You know, I was I did a piece with um, I sat down with Michael Emanalo a few weeks ago and you know 
you talk to they're doing it the right way, and that is the worry for the European football. They are doing it the right way, but yeah, you're totally right. The reaction I can get you from the question. We know what the reaction would be. It'd be it'd be cheat this and whatever whatever else. But how is it any different to what the states have been doing with PSG, Abu Dhabi, and Man City? You know, it's 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 just pure snobbery um, on the part of the of the European football establishment. They, they would, uh, and would the, Prem, the Premier League can't stop it, which I think is a worry for them. Will they try and bring some rules in to 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 try and stop it? I wouldn't I wouldn't rule them out trying to do something. I imagine behind the scenes, some of the Newcastle's rivals will be talking to the Premier League and the FA now about it. But um, yeah, I, I think I said, the reaction would be a negative one from everyone outside of Newcastle. I I don't have a problem with it whatsoever. You know that's football. It's progress. It's how these things work. You know Man City own ten clubs around the world. You know it, what's the problem with that? It's I, I don't. It's it's not it's not an issue for me. It's just the way it's been. You know Piff and Newcastle are just not a flavour of the month at the moment with um, some looking in. But. Yeah, I, I I don't have an issue with it, but yeah, the the, the reaction would be negative, and uh, it's one that Newcastle would, you know, Newcastle have been winning the PR battle, have been doing very well. I think that's why we're seeing Newcastle hold off on some things, you know, in terms of sponsorship, etc. They, they've known what was coming their way, but uh, they shouldn't be they shouldn't be ashamed of it, you know. Piff are here to stay now. Um, you should be very thankful for them, which I know the fans are, uh, and I think they should go for it. I do, I do. I think they should try and push the boundary here. Graham, did, did you mention Michael in Milano there, the Lawrence Fishburne lookalike? Who, yeah, uh, yeah, who I were... sat, yeah. I did a feature with him two weeks ago. I uh, sat down with him, talked about uh, recruitment in football. Obviously, you've read my piece about uh, with, with him. No, 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 I haven't yet, but no, uh, I know the, the name. Uh, we, we were linked to him as a director of football before Dan Ashford came in. He, he didn't yeah, mention course, anything yeah. like, like that, that, that he talked to Newcastle, did he? Um, no, I was talking to him about his recruitment, his beliefs, and, and actually, it was, it, you know, he was fascinating about the. He talked about the snobbery in Europe, and um, also um, dropped the dropped the news that they were looking at, going to start looking at South America and Brazil rather than just Europe as well. Which I think is a fear for the Premier League clubs that they think they've got South America to, on, to their own. Wait till Piff come calling to these young Brazilians. <laughs> but, so I think they, they've got someone, and I, and I think it's a sign of just how much progress the Saudi. Pro League is making by appointing someone like that to help their clubs um, is a is a very forward thinking appointment. You know, we think Newcastle, Ashworth, exactly. But for the Pro League to do something like that, you know, this isn't just a. I think the worry is for Saudi that it's for the rest of the world. It's not a knee jerk reaction. This they've got a good, they're starting with good solid foundations. They really are. So, um, but yeah, he he's someone who had respect in European football. You're right, Dazny. He was someone who was um, linked to Newcastle. Yeah, um, talented, very talented. I think most people would have been happy with him before the Ashworth links came in because it looked like it was a done deal um, coming yeah. in. And we did a lot of shows on it. But yeah, no, it's it's good to see, uh, and and it means that competitive edge will be um, tested certainly in the Premier League. But um. No, it's, uh, it's very much an interesting one uh, and one we will continue to monitor um, as the weeks and, uh, and months go on towards January because I, I do think um, the Saudi League will be a league that we will explore, um, that is for sure. And uh, interesting you said about um, South America because there has been some links and uh, foxes in the chat, um, as always, uh, our South American expert. Um, and he said, hopefully you'll be talking about the links to Santos Torres, Marcos, Leonardo, absolute superstar, single-handedly kept or keeping them out of the relegation zone at the moment. Um, and fear not, Foxy, because the links are there. Mm. Um, and look, Graham, I don't know how much you, you, you're aware of Marcos, Leonardo or any links with regards to Newcastle. But what was interesting is um, Bruno Andrade, who uh, reports on various different South American deals. He said Newcastle consultant enters... Uh, um, Talks for Marcus Leonardo. Santos dreams of a sale between 20 and 25 million euros. And Jack Tolbert as well um, touched on that um, as well um, and saying that Newcastle are admiring them. Uh, but no proposals are on the, on the table as yet. So it looks like 
Newcastle are continuing to look in that market. And look, it hasn't really been successful as yet because some of those players that we have been looking at have ended Rob. up like Chelsea or uh, Mateus Franca, for example, ended up at Crystal Palace. But, you know, he's a forward who's scored a number of goals. If I'm right, I think, I think he scored 13 goals and he's got two or three assists already this season. So around sort of 15 goal contributions in 20 plus games. So he's 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 performing well at the moment. But I don't know. Do you know anything about that, Graham? Have you heard anything about that? Or was that a new link for, for you? Oh, it's not a new link for me. I've got, I've got, a, I can say I've got a list of thirty Brazilian players who I'm constantly looking at, and that's expanding every year. Marcos Leonardo is one of the ones on that. He was very close to West Ham in the in the summer. He's a player who the European clubs do like. He's well built. He's a, he's a proper number nine, um, as we've seen, and he will he will be available um, in January most likely. Um, you know, Newcastle do like this market. You know, Andre Santos was a player they looked at and d- didn't get. Um, there's Pedrino at Corinthians. There's Pedro at Flamengo. Newcastle have looked at as well. I wouldn't rule him out the equation. It's a market they clearly are looking at. It's, it's good value. And Newcastle, when they don't have that much money to spend, they, you would imagine South America is somewhere they would look. It's, in a, it's somewhere Dan Ashworth knows well from his days at Brighton. Um, but... You know, Newcastle know this place well. They know Brazil well, and it wouldn't surprise me. I, I haven't heard new. I've heard a lot of clubs in for Leonardo. Um, it hasn't happened yet. He's one who's been constantly linked for the last two windows, and no one's quite pulled the trigger. And and it's a tough one because the sell for Newcastle is a minute com- at the minute is coming and be our third choice. I do wonder where Leonardo is a bit. Um, almost too good to play that role, guys. You know, if he came in, in if he came in then, um, because. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is he thirty? Is he twenty-three now? Um, I Le- believe he's twenty. I thought uh, maybe right. Twenty. Oh, yeah. sorry, sorry. There's so there's so many of them around. He he's an interesting one. Whether he would come in and play a third choice, um, he's a good player. He, he he is a good player, and yeah, we'll we'll see. They clearly are, when we say contacts, it's clearly third parties who are putting thing, two and two together. They know Newcastle, obviously want. Um, a striker, so yeah, it's no surprise to see the link. He's a good player. I think he does tick a box as a potential Cal- Wilson replacement. Um, I don't expect Callum Wilson to stay, even though he signed a new deal. I don't expect Callum Wilson to stay beyond this summer. If I'm being honest, guys, I think he will probably leave Newcastle in the summer. So yeah, um, I, th- I think Newcastle do need to do something in January. I, w- I wouldn't rule it out. I wouldn't rule it out. He's a good player, and he, he does tick a lot of boxes. We, um, Daz, we. Uh... I think we there was strong rumours that we'd put nearly sort of twenty million in for Mateus Franca that got rejected in in January. So who's to say that we don't put in something similar because it's rumoured it's around you didn't, twenty. You didn't put you didn't put that in for Mateus Franca. Oh, okay. It was it was something lower lower than that that we were rumoured, but but it was it was like they wanted no, five million more did, than what we offered. No, but. John Texter had that one right. John Texter, the owner of um, Botafogo. Leon and the Palace contact here. He had he had Matthias Franca wrapped up quite a while ago. Oh, interesting. Um, he hasn't done much yet, though. And he, he, no, he was one. He's very much one for the future. This Brazilian market, you see, is one of these where the players there's so many, there's so much talent out there. There's not many of them who are Premier League ready. There really isn't, and that's an issue. Where I think we'll see. Actually, an interesting watch on the weekend, guys. Will be the Copa Libertadores final. At the weekend, and there's a couple of players in there who Newcastle are being linked with, um, Valentin, Valentin Barco at Boca, and but there's also Andre, the midfielder, in there who's probably going to go to Liverpool in January. So keep keep an eye, and there's Mark Matthias Martinelli, the minister. So keep an eye on the couple of them. Sorry, there might be some players in there who Newcastle end up getting linked with as well. So that'll be an interesting watch at the weekend. But there's so many, so much talent in, in the South America, but. If you do sign a, um, a striker for January, do you want them Premier League ready? And that and that is the key, guys. It's not easy finding these players. Yeah, um, that brings on nicely because uh, Kenzie just put in in there another player. Um, What's his face? Um, yeah, uh, Victor Boniface. Boniface. Um, uh, Boniface yeah. uh, signed for twenty million. Um, it says undisclosed, but the, they report in Germany it was around twenty million, and. Um, interestingly, um, you know, it, it was reported uh, from uh, some sport 
and that we're weighing up an offer. There's also been talks on Team Talk as well, considering making a January bid. Um, you know, how much do you know about Victor Boniface, um, Graham? Um, uh, I, from what I've seen of him, and I've watched a little bit of him uh, at Leverkusen, I think he's such a talented, talented player, um, and he'd be a perfect striker. Of, um, signing for us in, in January, but but what 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 do you make of potentially that link and and him leaving in January so early, six months after signing? Yeah, he's he's not moving in January, and I, I dispute that you said he'd be a perfect sign for Newcastle. Why would he be? He's a, he's he's at the moment he's a one season wonder at, at Union. He's got <laughs> nine he's got nine goals in Belgium, Pete. He's got a lot to prove. He's had a good run at Leverkusen. Yeah, but Leverkusen are a phenomenal team. You've got to look at what's around him. Zebi Alonso has built a, a masterpiece of a team there. Is is that a fa- is it Bonifacio is wonderful to so scoring seven goals? Or should he have scored 14 goals by now? From my contacts in Germany, I'm hearing the latter, where he should actually have scored more. Um, this is a player who Brighton turned down. Remember, he was basically owned by Brighton, the union, and they didn't think he was good enough for England. Yeah, so think about that. He was he was at Union, and Brighton had first refusal on him. Basically, they owned him. So I, I, I the likes of Garassi, Bonifacio, Bonifacio, Bonifacio. I think he's miles away at the moment. He's really miles away. He's not. He, he's good. He's young. He's only twenty two. But he, mm. Newcastle don't have the money to buy him in January. They just don't have the money. He's not available on loan. Guy, remember this FFP. Newcastle are not spending forty million pounds. On a third choice striker, Pete, it's not happening. No, no I, I personally didn't think it was happening in January. It was just from the links that that had been seen um, that it was linked with a January move for, for me. And I've said it to the boys as well. I think that that's a deal that gets done. Leave Le- yeah. Le- 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 any link with Leverkusen player. What we have to remember, guys, their their chance of a title. Leverkusen, from what I'm told, Leverkusen will not be selling any players in January. So the likes of um, Hincapé, um um, etc. Taps Orbers at Leverkusen, isn't he? Um, what? is it Florian, well. Florian, Vert, Florian Vert at Leverkusen as well? Yeah, they're, 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 top, they're top of the table, they will not be selling any of their players in January. The one player who was possibly going or may be able to go is Adam Halozek, who is a striker who West Tra- striker slash forward in West Ham trying to get, but again, I think he's more of a side player now. There's Palacios. Um, Hoffman, none of these big players at Leverkusen w- will be going uh, in January. So I think any Leverkusen, like, yeah, I don't, I don't dispute that. If you've got one of the top scorers in, in the Bundesliga, Newcastle and all the Premier League clubs will be looking at him. But yeah, more for the summer. Getting this player in January is so tough in this market, and 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 it's that, it's that. Do you remember we all? They all I tell you what I liken it to, guys. Is do you remember Spurs? Always struggled to find a number two to Harry Kane, didn't they? All that money yeah. they bought player after player, Lorente and all sorts of players, didn't they? The Victor Janssen at one point, they could never find um, <laughs> like, someone to sit just sit bench. on the bench behind yeah. Harry Kane, which is what you're asking him to do because you're not you're not going to find a better player than <clears> Alexander Ezek, one of the top five strikers in Europe at the moment, in my opinion. So to, you, you, it's a it's a tough selling for Dan. I wish Ashworth, isn't it? Come in, play. Uh, you, you need to find someone like a Div. No, I'm not saying so. I'm not saying time Divock Origi, but someone that ilk who's happy to sit on the bench for three quarters of the season, and that's a tough sell. Yeah. Well, hopefully, we're playing in a lot of competitions where we can give minutes to uh, a lot of players. But look, um, I, I I know you you don't think he's at that level yet, but I think. Victor Boniface will, will will prove that over the season. Um, I think he's. I, I personally, I like him. To, he's had one I good like quarter. Of a, he's had one good quarter of a season. He's had, he's had a good quarter of a season at Bayern Leverkusen. Before that, he scored nine goals in Belgium. Before look, that, there are there are a lot of players. There are a lot of players that that have that have that jump that go to a team like you said. Javi Alonso's got them playing some fantastic football. If you want, yeah. if you are looking and at the best strikers in Europe, go and, go and sign, go and sign Santi Jimenez from Feyenoord. Now, the, now we're talking about a real potential world class striker there, Pete. Santi Jimenez is spectacular. He is absolutely go and watch. If you haven't seen him, go and watch him. He is amazing. He he, he is the sort of striker who, yeah. I, again, I don't. Again, I don't think he'd be willing to sit on the bench anyway at the yeah. moment. But with him, he, him, he's special. He could be. Do you think he could transition to the Premier League, Graham? When the links first happened, you know, Manchester United were linked to him probably. Does last um, 
starting in January and, and, and at nine to min we've got um we have American and Mexican um sites. So I, I, I heard about them quite a while ago and I was a bit I was a bit skeptical, purely I was again sno- football snobbery. I heard this Mexican playing in Holland. I was snobbish about it. I've I've since watched him very closely and I think he's possibly quite special. I think he could. I think he's He's not everyone's he's not dissimilar to Haaland in the way his his body style, his physique, the way he plays. I think he's probably special. Um and who knows if you do get in the Champions League again, that's the sort of player who you do want to back Alexander Isaac up. And and the beauty of Alexander Isaac is obviously as we've seen last season, he can play on the left and the right. So you could I wouldn't necessarily in next summer, if you do finish top four again and have that pulling power, I wouldn't rule out someone like that. Interesting. Um, we will see. We will see. How it's the way Liverpool do it, isn't it? You can sign these players knowing that Nunes, Gakpo, etc., and the like. You can make oh. them happy by the odd, Isaac. I'm sure would be more than happy playing off the left. If it's good enough for but, Kylian Mbappe, it's good enough for Alexander Isaac. So I think that's the way. I like the fact that Isaac can play there, and we have seen him do that under Eddie Howe. And you said that, and you, and you, and you mentioned you mentioned with. Um, Victor Boniface and, and a couple of other players you mentioned Jimenez as well and he, he said you know would they be happy playing third choice but I I, I understand it to a point and, and you're not the only one to, to have mentioned that you know why do we need a third striker they're, they're just going to be on the bench all the time but Liverpool make it work Liverpool have probably got one of the one of the best front three lineups because they've got like yep. six players that they just trans, transform well, it's, into yeah it's a, front, it's a front five then, yeah it's in, it's, it's in the changing I think I think they, they are going down that route. And and when you see the more salary replacements, I suspect it'll be someone who can play across the front three. So they'll have four, five, six players, as you say, play. You can, but I think you're seeing that with Newcastle yeah. now. Anthony Gordon can play right and left. You wouldn't particularly yeah. play him in the middle, but Harvey Barnes can play as number 10 in various roles. And even he's actually least striker. It's probably only it's probably only Callum Wilson there who plays in that one outright position, isn't there? So I think that it probably is something that um I wouldn't be surprised me if Newcastle went down that route as well. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I think that that's what we need to look to do. If we want to be an exciting tacking team with lots of options available, with lots of competitions to be being competitive in, ultimately we need more. Um, and, and so that's something that we uh, looked at. Um, there was a link on here, uh, Victor Gokarez as well. Um, there was links of, uh, I don't know how much you know about, him as well. He was another player because you know. yeah, he went from he went from sort of commentary to sporting. But the, there's talks that you know um, he may well not spend too long in Portugal and and, and come back. So that was that was kind of another link uh, alongside. Come back to where? Come back to where? England. Potentially, yeah. Um, and that was that was based on that was based on kind of his early start um, the, to sort of. To his life in, in in Portugal, but um, that was I just he's a, bit, he's a he's a, I know a lot about Vitor Gokaras. He's a, he's an outstanding player. I saw a lot of him in the Championship. He he's a very sensible boy. He took the chance. He took the option of going to Sporting. He's got a fifty million pound release clause. He he's not coming back to England anytime soon. I'm told that he is. You know he he sees himself, and I think a lot of teams do as a potential. You know Barcelona, Real Madrid type player. Um, don't think there's a real avenue back for him to come to England. He he he's. He's more of an outright number nine. You don't really see him playing that way, but he's a, he's a special player. He's a he, and he's a player who a lot of teams are regretting. He, and he's a rare player, Victor Gaikaras, because he's one that really did get away from Black from Brighton. Brighton allowed him to leave and they sent him to Coventry. I know it's one that Brighton don't make many mistakes, but Victor Gaikaras is a very rare Brighton transfer mistake. Interesting. Um, that's it. Are there any questions before we? Um... <laughs> Just, yeah, there's, of... there's, there's only 30 questions. Oh, there's yeah. absolutely <laughs> loads of questions. Uh, let me try and put some order on them because there are some of them that are, are, are kind of linked. I uh, want to go to one here first that um, people I'll like pray to does Millsborough still getting beat? I know that'll be many of the questions. Millsborough still getting beat. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a, there's a question here, and it's kind of I suppose it's linked around around our sponsorship deals that we're coming in Adidas coming in, in the summer and um. As a Saudi as well, but question for Graham. You said earlier we were a 40 million deficit. Does that breaking mean news, oh, Daz? Breaking news, and Middlesbrough have just equalized. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> Middlesbrough. Uh, but uh, so yeah, we said you said earlier, um, that we were 40 million uh, FFP deficit. Does that mean over it? 
are from it or any idea how recently announced partnerships affect our FFP moving forward? Um, over it. Yeah, it's not. I didn't. I didn't. I, 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 I presumed I put it put it forward as a negative. Yeah, it's not. It's not a good thing. Um, yeah, and, and the deals will help. You know, the Saudi the airline deal, of course, it will. But there is a limit. We know in term. It's over a three year cycle as well. I, I'm not. I'm not claiming to be an expert. This. I'm just passing on information from from sources really. So I'm not quite an expert on how it works. You know, I'm. I, and it's not quite as simple as just saying adding up all the transfer fees and minuses. It's not quite as simple, but yeah, the, as I said, though as well with Newcastle, they are they are paying particular attention to it because they know they're under more scrutiny from the authorities than other clubs, and that's just the way it is. It's not fair, but that's just how it is, and Newcastle know that. So I think they're treading the very um, that line, knowing that they're not going to. Some clubs really do when there's a line there. Some clubs are really pushing their toes up to a line and going across it, and Newcastle aren't doing that. They're really not pushing it. So um, I think they're being careful when it comes to it but yeah the, the new sponsorship deals will will help of course it will uh interesting one here from chris uh another one do you know i'll take one of the names he has put down uh benjamin sissoko have you heard anything much about him he would he could could he be someone that would be potentially on the move in the summer rather than january yeah it's Tesco's not moving in january he's only just moved to um who he's at um leaps leipzig now isn't he and zavi 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 simmons well i do i do love the optimism of some of these fans yeah, zavi simmons <laughs> is zavi simmons is heading back to psg so you don't need to talk about yeah. him anymore and um, ferguson sesco's yeah sesco's a player who who you, you guys you know newcastle like to have done for a long time but again he, he's a very expensive sesco he's very expensive i think he sees himself really leading the line for someone ferguson I mean, for, I think he. The thing with him, I think he's got his career mapped out. He's going to stay at Brighton for two or three years, and then he's going to get a big move. You know, who who knows who knows where you guys are with Isaac in two years' time? You might be ready to make that move for Evan Ferguson. You know, he's he's a he's a little worldy. We know he is, but yeah, Ferguson won't be moving for twenty twenty four summer at the earliest. Evan Ferguson probably twenty twenty five. Simon asked the question. Even gents, how many targets in January realistically? I think two myself, but as as Graham was saying, I think one would be on loan. Um, yeah, um, I think centre half depends on the Botman injury. I think obviously a DM will come in, and maybe a forward. I think I think you have to sacrifice the number ten, who I think they would have liked. Um, I think three. Depending on the injury to Isaac, depending on what, how Wilson does up until January, I think we might see three. Um, at, at, at least two of them on loan, at least two, and then even a permanent deal might be with a view to the summer. And you heard just just in between the questions, had you heard any links around Emil Smith Rowe? Um, um, uh, the Northern Echo had reported um, a couple of weeks back, I think it was. That, um, that there were links and they were looking at Emma Smith as a potential option. Like, have you heard anything like that? Would, would, would you think that would be a good option? He, he he is a number ten, but he can play on the right or the left, so he is. I, I know we rep- I know I know I, I wrote report on it the day before, but not Black or Pete. I know that um, oh, on Emil Smith Rowe being, uh, being 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 option. Yeah, Smith Rowe is one of these players who he is. He's getting itchy feet. He's not particularly happy about. The, the situation. If you remember, guys, it was the summer before that Aston Villa offered an awful lot of money for Smith Rowe, and he nearly went. And and he's a player that's still interesting to he. I think he's that number ten who Newcastle are crying out for. I do. I I think Smith Rowe would be great for you. Um, I I still think you're missing that. Not in every game, but during some games, you're clearly missing that that missing player in the final third. Smith Rowe, I think, is a player very much on Newcastle's radar. Not one for January particularly, and I don't think Arsenal in this tighter race are going to let any keep any big players go. But I think for next summer, Smith Rowe would definitely be one to keep an eye on. I think he will probably leave Arsenal next summer, uh, and Newcastle, Aston Villa, both huge fans of his. Okay. If you if you could, I'll, I'll, I'm just reading through the questions, but I, I'm kind of just going to summarize. If you could, if you, if you could ask for one name you think that may rock up for us in January, who would you give us? Just I know it's many yeah, things have um, changed, you know. Then. 
I, I think I think ultimately I think if Calvin Phillips is available um, long t- long term, he's a fit. I'd, I'd, I'll I'll play safe and say Calvin Phillips for now. Um, we'll see how the PIF conversations go because I think, as what Pete said before, in terms of the reaction, I think Newcastle will be gauging the reaction of the Premier League when it comes to these PIF situations and what have you. Uh, and we'll have to see what, what is available. You know, I think Newcastle, no one else, I don't think there's any other Champions League club in for him. You know, New Liverpool aren't in for him. That's not right. And and Man United probably won't have Champions League football to offer for much longer. So, yeah, I, th- I think Phillips at this point is the most likely. Um, Lee asked, and this is probably one for more so the summer. Um, question for everyone: Would you take Ramsdale from Arsenal? I think he's a good competition for Pope and his previous relationship with Hull. <laughs> competition for Nick Pope, yeah. Um, I, I, I like Nick Pope. Um, I do. Um, I think Aaron Ramsdale's better. I do. I think Aaron, Aaron Ramsdale's had a rough ride. I think he's better than David Rea. I'm not sure what the Mike Mcallister is looking at. I think. Um, Aaron Ramsdale will leave in 2024. He knows now David Ray is number one. It's looking like Chelsea is showing an interest from what I'm hearing. Um, the story the other day. Whether I have to let him go in January, I'm not so sure. But yeah, keep an eye on Chelsea for Ramsdale. Chelsea. Um, Adam asked the question, Graham, any talk of, of players going out of Newcastle? I think we need everyone we can get at the moment, but yeah, anyone going out? Well, yeah, you know, you, you had the likes of Lascelles, etc. And you might you might see someone like Paul Dummett go, but we may as well keep him around. I, I don't think we'll see many exits, guys. I don't. Obviously, I think Callum Wilson was one who I know Bournemouth, Bournemouth liked to sign his new deal. But whilst you're in this title, while you're in this battle top for, for top four Champions League, if you do, it may be some of the squad players who you want rid of. But no, I don't see them being any major, major, major departures. You know, we may see Saudi getting linked to a, a few players, but no, I don't. I think Newcastle, there won't be many exits for obvious reasons. Yes. Uh, Ian Toon Trader asked the question, at some point, can you see the blatant snobbery and discrimination against Saudi Arabian football and the Toon getting stamped out by the by FIFA as they're uh, clearly hosting the World Cup in 2034, I believe? Well, I, I, I don't... You can't you can't stamp out opinion. And, and I don't think there'll be change... Will be change I don't think the attitudes and opinions will change anytime soon. But the fact is... As long as FIFA don't put any blocks in place, I think that they'll be helping the situation. I don't see FIFA interfering because they, I think it's a good thing for Newcastle that the World Cup's going there. It shows that FIFA are backing the Saudi regime, they're backing the Saudi Arabian football project. So I think that's a good piece of news for Newcastle. That means they're unlikely to interfere with any possible transfers, etc. Because they're the only ones who could really, rather than the Premier League and UEFA, the only ones who could really interfere if they so wished would be FIFA, but I don't think that's going to happen. I agree. Different, different question here. And a favourite of, of this channel. Any news on Everson's points? <laughs> um, it, it, it's an interesting one. It's, it, it's a subject. <laughs> it's a subject I know um, um, I am investigating. Um, I don't know enough about it. I, I, I can't I don't believe it's an issue. There's so many things going on with Everton in terms of the the takeover. We're still not sure if Triple Seven partners are going to be able to do it. There are other people waiting in the wings. It's an absolute mess at that club at the moment. It really is. I think they're very lucky that. Do you not think they'll get a points deduction? I I don't know enough about it, Pete. From what I'm hearing, no. But I don't. I, I genuinely don't know enough about it. I I don't think they will. And I think they're just they're a very fortunate club. But this is the worst standard Premier League has been possibly ever because those three promoted teams um, are not good enough um, and that's the only reason that Everton is going to stay up this season I have one question from me and then I have one question that I'm going to keep for the very end but uh, it's themed um, but I heard on, on uh, a podcast you were on Graham you were talking to your colleague Miss Scott about um, AC Milan and the potential for them being aware, or allegedly, of the um, 
the Tunali uh, betting scandal have you, and and the, the the possibility of Newcastle maybe following up on that and to see is there anything that that can be done or uh, to, to, uh, around that situation? But have you heard anything more about that yourself? I don't believe there's any evidence for recourse. The only avenue for recourse Newcastle would have is if they could prove or how, if there is proof that Milan knew yeah. beforehand. So obviously there is evidence with the Turian prosecutors um, to now they had to provide that. So I imagine Newcastle's lawyers are going through that evidence to just double check that um, Tenali, Tenali wasn't sending any betting tips to anyone in the Milan hierarchy. Seems unlikely, doesn't it, guys? Really, um, yeah. they're hoping for that. Maybe he messaged Paolo Maldini, who was spotted director at the time, about any goings on, but it doesn't look like it, though. So, unfortunately for Newcastle, um, there won't be any recourse available to them, um, because I don't think they'll be able to prove. That Milan and Newcastle to have to on their part, they're not suggesting that role that there was any um knowing or malice on Milan's side, but they will look at it. And if there is, they'll act yep. upon it. Uh, but it doesn't appear there is any. Yeah, well, that's right. Um, right, I well, yeah, um, I, okay, I'll, I'll ask the last question. So, and it comes from Mike, Mike Gent. Uh, what's your favorite horror, horror movie? Um, I like, I'm a bit old fashioned. I do like Halloween. I do quite like the the scream the scream stuff. I do quite like that. I think that's a nice easy watch. Um, I don't like any, I don't like the, too, the anything too deep and psychological and so yeah. But I do enjoy the original Halloween. But the big breaking news, guys, from St James's Park, <laughs> Middle Middlesbrough two, Exeter one. And that's a hard, yeah. horror story in, in, in its own. Breaking news. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to, to be fair, it's, I'm, 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 not, I'm, not, I'm not getting excited by it, guys, because, you know, we're, 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 it's one of them where we're not going to win it. We, we, we managed to push ourselves as your playoffs. Do we, need a, do we need a League Cup quarterfinal? Probably not. You know, it, whilst most of the big boys, a host of big boys are still in it, you know, it's not something we need. But, hey, we can't afford to lose to Exeter, can we? So, um I'd love, I'd love a, I'd love a Newcastle Middlesbrough, Middlesbrough quarter final. Right? Yeah. That would, that would. Well, be... yeah, yeah, it, it, it would uh, go along. But remember, even if you beat us, Pete, you still, you still wouldn't take our crown of being the most successful team in the northeast this century so far. So you still wouldn't say that. <laughs> no, I wasn't. No, I wasn't referring to that. It'd just be nice. <laughs> Derby, Derby. It's been a long time. Since it, it, it was. It was. Yeah, yeah I've organized. had a few. Yeah, Newcastle. Yeah, we had a few. To be fair, hey, we've had we've had a good start of the season with Northeast Derby's guys, so it would hold no fears for us. <laughs> That's, we haven't had one for a while, but you know. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame, isn't it? It's 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 one where we're we're, we're slogging it out in the championship, us in Sunderland, and whilst you boys are flying high, and if if even, even Leeds was a good trip for you guys, wasn't it? It's a shame, like you really don't have many local games at all now, do you? It's um, it's always nice to have at least one in there. Um, I think is that is that it on the questions? Yeah, that's that. that, that more there was a lot of questions that were kind of topics that we we covered, like Boniface and loads of different names and the South American market and FFP and how much how much Graham thought we might have. It's it's Graham already gave his answer on that topic. It's yeah. a bit well. I will be, and hey, if and if you guys want, I was will say if anyone wants to say hello to me Saturday, I will be, I will be covering the game on Saturday. So I'll be at St James for the Ars, the Arsenal game. I do see the odd person say hello, so I presume it is from this show. So um, nice one. Make sure you say hello to Graham. Everyone. Um, look, uh, we're with it. We're we're about there. We've covered all, all the topics. We've covered all the uh, the players and the links. Um, Look, I'd just like to say massive thanks to you, Graham, for taking the time on short notice for coming and joining us uh, for the hour. Uh, it's been brilliant to chat to you, uh, give your insight. And uh, look, I'm sure as we get closer to January, we'll, uh, we'll we'll kind of prize your way back onto the onto the channel to talk. Anytime, more. guys. Anytime. We're still waiting for we're still waiting for me free gifts anyway. But I'll, the more I come in, the more, <laughs> the more chance the more chance I've got. The more I come in, the more chance I've got. So, an uh, we'll ASM <laughs> mug. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'll, I'll, I'll just. Well, I was going to say I would display it in the background, but my dad will probably smash it, so I'm not sure you should send me a mug. <laughs> <laughs> Appearance based. <laughs> Appearance yeah, yeah, based. yeah. Just, just get. Uh, yeah, just the. Uh, 
save it for me, save it for, me for the games, guys. But yeah, no, anytime, guys. Well, uh, it's still going to be a busy, busy summer. It's going to be fascinating. I think this PIF thing just it's an extra layer. Just when we think it's getting not not quiet and not quiet and dull at Newcastle, it never will be, which is thankfully for me. But yeah, I think this PIF thing is a really interesting thing. And and uh, if hey, I said guys before, if if you can do one, why not do three? <laughs> The fume, yeah. it'd be unreal. It'd be unreal. Uh, Even I bring it on. Bring yeah. it on. With all the negativity that this club has had from opposition fans, bring on the fume. I, I, at this point, I, I'm past caring. It's about building a, a good enough team that's going to put us where Graham said he feels, and we feel we can be competitive in. Is that, that's certainly the top five. So, yeah, um, do you remember, there's one midfield I didn't mention, Peter. One midfield I didn't mention. What about, what about a little home coming for Gino Vinaldum? Uh, yeah, yeah, because he is he um Steven Gerrard's team, is it? Um, Alan yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, to be fair, yeah, to be fair, that I am wrong there because obviously he's at one of the few clubs that Piff don't own, but um, <laughs> yeah, so he would, but just, just, just have, a, have a look, guys. Some fascinating, there's some fascinating names in that pro league yeah. who, who could be a uh, it could be available. I'm sure all the guys are looking through the list now who you could uh, but we didn't Fabinho, we didn't mention maybe Fabinho could come in and do a job for six months. <laughs> Imagine the Liverpool fume. Uh, we have to do a show completely on on the the players uh, based in Saudi by pay phone clubs. That that would be interesting because it will get um, to because obviously they've got eight players that can register. So it, and if they have enough time, I imagine what will happen there is that Piff will have the chance where if if a Neves went out, they could probably bring someone else in for that six months. It's, you know, if anyone can afford to do that, it's them. I'm yeah. sure they could change the rules for themselves if they need to, as well. Well, I do. I do wonder if they do change it to European based European players and stuff. I think I've heard there is a few changes coming in the Saudi Pro League rules where um, maybe change it to how many European players you can have, how many South Americans. So it it's likely to increase in terms of squad number. Uh, just let us know where we can find you. Um, your your your, your so- socials. And uh, and where we can um, hear your and, and see your work, Graham. Yeah, just on X. Well, X X slash Twitter. We're not allowed to call it Twitter anymore, are we? <laughs> At Graham Bailey, as you can see, spelt spelt the same as uh, the Newcastle legend Graham Sooness. And uh, yeah, all, all my stuff's on there, guys. <laughs> you You're winding us up now. Uh, <laughs> well, well, no, no, he's not. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I have no for that. That's the, the <laughs> Graham Sooner. I absolutely hear the Graham Sooner. <laughs> no, but I, no, but I was, I was, Daz, I was named after him. I was named after him, but I can't oh. hold that. But um, he was a Middlesbrough oh. legend at the time. Yeah, he was. Uh, that, that's why it's spelled that way. Good pundit, though. Interesting pundit. At yeah, times. He's a, he was a legend. He was a legend for us. He loves Pogba, though. Um, just a quick shout out as well that tomorrow eight o'clock we're doing a, a live a watch, dual watch long. We have Man United fans and ourselves on the show, so uh, join us at eight o'clock as we take you through the game and hopefully into the next round of the Carabao Cup. So uh, eight o'clock unloaded. Um, prediction, Graham, for the game tomorrow. Oh dear, exit of just eight last. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um. I, oh no! You, you should be winning that game. United really are shocking at the minute. Really are awful to watch. Um, Manchester United, that is. Um, it's it's a. T- I could see it going. I could see it being a, going to penalties. Do you, do you know what team Newcastle are pointing out yet? I think that I think Newcastle will go for this, but it's tough with that yeah. squad system, isn't it? It's tough. It's 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 a game that neither of these two teams want. Um, or. You might scrape through. I think you should scrape through, but it depends what I think. It d- t- fully depends on how strong a team United Man United put out. They might end up putting quite a strong team out. Yeah, possibly. Um, yeah, maybe we'll maybe see. you want Hoyland to play because he couldn't hit a band dart at the minute. So <laughs> yeah, win himself yeah. out and then bring Martial on, who's probably just as just as bad. Uh, that that would be ideal. But uh, we'll see. Um, even their best players, Rashford, Bruno, Fernandes, don't seem to be playing well at the moment, are actually detrimental to their team. So, yeah, who knows? Who knows? But let, let's see. But we'll be on tonight. Uh, sorry, tomorrow night uh, doing the watch along. Um, that is for sure. If you haven't already, guys, click the likes and subscribe to the, the channel. Get the likes up for tonight. I'm not sure what they are now numbers wise. 
but lots of mods and people in the chat are saying get those likes up um but no thank you to graham uh, for joining us thank you to everyone in the chat um as well uh, it's been a really good good chat and a, a really good show but uh that's uh, we we're about there to yeah take we in. are about there sponsors you know who you are the radio uh, com and h2o bathroom design co uh you know all about them we'll be talking more about them tomorrow but i think all that's left to say is thanks graham again and how'd you like that everyone good night anytime. happy halloween <laughs>